What's up, gang? Carlton Flowers here, your crypto pro. Yay! And I tell you what, since my last video, I just don't understand it. Maybe you can explain it to me in the comments. Maybe you guys can explain. Um, I, I don't get it. I really don't. What's up with all the big mouths on YouTube that were just telling us just when I did the video saying that we were bumping our head on the 50 EMA and I was looking for a reversal? And they were talking about this. You know, you, you, you know who the big mouse are. You can just scroll through and you can see them. And they're all going bananas yesterday talking about we're about to shoot off to the moon. This is it. We're going to 100K. This is the moon shot of a lifetime right here, folks. 250,000. I think we saw one video and the title said going to 500,000. Oh, yeah, 500,000. Explain to me. What, what are these people saying? And also... Would you please explain to me why the people who make these ridiculous assumptions, projections, get tens of thousands of views on their videos, but then I will get 100 views to 150 views for telling you exactly the unbiased report, the exact report on what I see with the technicals. Why is it that there are only 150 smart individuals looking to get an unbiased report to find out what really could be going on with the Bitcoin movement, while the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, flock to have their ears tickled, their ears tickled, and to be told what they want to hear that would make them get a dopamine rush, because it is what their, their wish is and not reality so they can understand what their expectation should be. Well, I guess you don't have to answer the question because I just answered that. That is the answer. People would rather be told that Bitcoin is going to 150000 to 500000 rather than to hear someone shooting a video saying that we're getting rejected on the 50 EMA line. It's probably going to go down. Who wants to hear that? Unless you're shorting. I think the 150 people, there was one guy that said, well, I've got a short position. I'm glad you posted this. And I said, I think you're going to do pretty good. Well, I'm guessing he did good because look what happened after that video. Here we are, 42, 102. He did very good in that short position. Now, I don't short, and I'm not saying anybody should, but that's just just kind of a point that I'm making that the 150 who wanted to hear the truth of this about to happen, I guess they're pretty sensible people. Now, as it's creeping up here and we're at the top end of the next lower down support and resistance zone, we see we shot on down, we jumped into the box, we violated it, and we came back up. We had two candle closes that the first one rejected at the top even though it wicked above and now this current candle is building on the support resistance zone here as a base and i taught what did i talk about before i talked about this volume node right here at 42 and change and what did we do we snapped right down to it we were at the 43 one i said we're going to probably hit this 43 one go back and look at the video and i said next after that the probability um is this one that's just under 42 or it could move up but where the positioning of the stochastic cycle was that dictated the movement now where does it go from here well with this slight upward movement here i think we're going to get a curling of this i think this is going to happen based on what we're looking at right now with this candle growing and trying to poke its head out we could get a rounding and a reversal here and I don't know. There's some indetermination going on here with the MACD. It doesn't know what to do yet. And actually, it is the lagging indicator. The oscillators here lag behind the oscillators here. There is a bearish crossover right there. But will that play out? Because we can see that the blue line is starting to make a cup movement here. It's starting to round off. Maybe it wants to jump off after it's touched and crossed and come up and do this again. Who knows? Are these bars in the histogram going to print more in the negative? That I do not know. I don't know. It could stay here shallow and it could jump right up green. So in order to figure out what this four-hour stochastic is going to do, we need to look at the one day. Um, 
by the way, let me uh, get rid of my handsome face. The one day chart here. Whoops, turn drawing mode off. Here we go. One day, scrunch it down. Now, this gives us a little bit more evidence, but now it's conflicting evidence, and I'll tell you why. There's conflicting signals. We're getting mixed signals here, Bitcoin. First of all, we see the rejection in between these two support resistance zones. We're bouncing like a ball in between these two walls. Floor, ceiling, floor, ceiling. Second of all, the stochastic is not looking very determinate about moving up. We had a crossover right there. Okay, there's your bullish crossover on the stochastic, which would say momentum should be moving up. But do you see how the fast line, the blue one, is starting to curl over? It's looking like it wants to come on around and do one of these numbers, maybe. That's what it's looking like. And it looks like, to me, for now, since this high here, the overall trend, we hit another high here. But what did we have after that? This big dip here after we had this slide. So the overall trend on the stochastic is down. All right. Which says that we could be coming down here to revisit oversold zone. Oops. I got a new mouse, but it's an old mouse and it's not working too well either. I'm going to the store today. I promise you. So overall downward movement on the stochastic with the one day that tells me we're still in a downtrend. Look at this MACD. Look at this, guys. All right, it's peaked here. There's your peak. And we had several field crossover attempts. Look at all these field crossover attempts. And now we have a divergence and we're printing, printing, printing. We're printing red bars on the histogram. We went from light red to dark red just now, which means we have a greater red candle, which means reversal momentum. And we have a divergence, a diverging fast line and slow line, which means momentum is this way. All right. So because of that, I would say that the probability is that we're not going to get much out of this rebound, that we could come up to here and go down. That's best case. And I'm not thinking very positively about the price not getting snapped right back into this support resistance zone right there. And what my eyeballs are on is this 37 for right now. Just for right now. Now, we know what could happen after that if we scrunch in more data. We've talked about what those volume nodes are. Okay, here's the one sticking out at 27. Here's the one at 33 at the point of control. Here's the one sticking out I just showed you at 37. That's very probable. Here's the one that the darkest prognosticators are talking about here. It's down at 15.7. Actually, they're saying 14. There's a node there. It just depends on how much data that you pull in of what you're going to get on these volume at nodes on the VPVR. That's the volume profile visible range. Okay, VPVR. So that's all uh, that means. But we know that we jump around to where these popular spikes are for the volume at each particular price. All right. So maybe Bitcoin does jump up today. There's some people that are saying that we could bounce off of this. And it's possible. They're saying that, um, let me make this green. They're saying that we get back into this support resistance zone here. And they're basically calling for popping out to this node up here. Can it happen? Yeah, it can. That's the 57 that we talked about before. Let's see where the thick of that one is. 57. I do believe that's possible. If I had to go with probabilities... My first bet is down here where we talked about before, 37. And then the second one would be up here to the 57. And then third is eventually drop here. And the reason why I say third is because we already know that if we pop up to here, this is going to happen. We're not going to get above this resistance zone here. I'm not a believer in that. Yeah, it can happen, but it's highly unlikely. So if we get a rip to 57, I'm looking at coins to buy like right now i'm buying right now i'm going to try to grab some stuff um i've already got some nice bags of things but if we hit this 57 note here i'm selling and i'm gonna sit back and then wait for this and then bust off another swing trade and then reevaluate after that that's all i got i just wanted to give you that brief update on what i see in bitcoin and talk about all these 
big mouth people who just can't get it right. God bless them. But I guess, hey, they're chasing clout and chasing views. I'm just doing this for fun and mainly to inform my friends and family of what's going on and definitely for the benefit of my awesome Telegram group, which you're welcome to join. I'm not really in this looking for the numbers or the income. That's how and why I can tell you I can tell it like it is with no bias. So we'll see you next time. Like and subscribe if you want the truth, the plain truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God.